Erosion, weathering and mass movement as part of the 9 to 1 Edexcel GCSE Geography course. Right, so for the course there are four types of erosion, three types of weathering and four types of mass movement that you need to learn about. Okay, so erosion, what's erosion? Erosion is the wearing away of material by a moving force. For the, so the first type is hydraulic action. Okay, so this is where the impact force and weight of the water against the rocks wears them away and it also compresses the air in faults and joints in the rock, causing pressure to build up and dislodges rocks. As the pressure decreases, air is released, causing the rocks to weaken further. So you can see in the diagram here, you've got the force and the pressure of the water working, creating joints and cracks. Okay, and then the gas inside these cracks are going to get compressed even more, making them even bigger. Attrition. So the way that I remember this one as compared to erosion is that the rocks are heading towards each other, so they're heading at each other. So it's at attrition. Okay, so this is where rock fragments and pebbles powered by the water are reduced and sized and are rounded as they collide off each other. Eventually they are broken down into sand sized particles as it's more easily transported by the waves. Okay, so here got the rough, so they're colliding into each other, and then afterwards they're much smaller and they're much rounder. Abrasion. So this is different to attrition. Usually people get these two mixed up, abrasion and attrition. OK, so as I said, remember, attrition, they're heading at each other, whereas abrasion, it's where they're heading at the wall or at different pieces of rock. So where fragments of rock, pebble and sand are picked up by the waves and thrown against the rock face, causing pieces of rock to break off. Right, so the last one, solution. OK, the chemical uh, action on rocks by seawater, most effective on limestone rocks in which the calcium is dissolved and carried away by the solution. So often this is the one that people forget about it's because it's one of the least used ones. But if you put this into your answer, OK, and if it's in the right place, it's going to show the examiner that you know what you're on about. Right, OK, so types of weathering, the breakdown or decay of rocks by natural processes acting upon them, right? So lots of people are confused about what the difference between erosion is and what weathering is, okay? So erosion is where you've got an actual force, moving force going against it, whereas weathering where it's breaking down or decaying because of natural processes which are acting upon the rocks. Okay, so the first one is freeze, uh, freeze thaw weathering, okay? So when water freezes, it expands by about 10%. So this causes stress in the rocks and creates joints. When the ice melts, the water seeps further into the joints. After repeated cycles of this freezing and thawing, fragments of rock may break off, making the rock smaller. So as you can see, we've got the water in here, then it's freezing and it expanded. So it's gonna create cracks and joints in the rock. But then when it uh, goes back to its liquid state, it's gonna go into these cracks and it's gonna make the cracks get bigger and bigger until eventually, when this has happened over and over, it's going to just crack and there's going to be loads of little rocks that are created. Biological weathering. OK, so this is where the roots of growing plants push on the uh, rock with constant pressure, widening cracks in the plants. OK, and so that's the most common type. So that's what I've drawn the diagram of here. OK, so the roots, as you can see, causing cracks because it's constant pressure. OK, so you've got constant pressure on the rock and it's going to make it um, weaker. But then you can also have burrowing animal, uh, animals that can weather the rocks, OK, by weakening and decaying them. OK, so that's when uh, animals burrow under the soil. OK, they can get to the rock and just uh, by moving against them, it's going to uh, create weathering. OK, and the last type is chemical weathering. OK, so this is where rainwater is slightly acidic. OK. And when rain falls on rocks such as limestone or chalk, a slight chemical reaction occurs. And over time, this weakens the rock and breaks it down. OK, so as you can see here, this is the rock. OK, the rain's fallen down. So it's probably going to be limestone. OK, and because the, uh, the rainwater is slightly acidic, 
It's just breaking down the rock and making it smaller. Mass movement, okay? So this is the movement of material down a slope due to gravity, okay? So it's totally different to erosion and weathering, okay? So it's what happens to the sediment and the rocks after it's been made smaller. So slumping. Slumping usually occurs after long periods of rainfall. The rainwater seeps through the permeable rock, such as limestone, to the impermeable rock, such as clay. And the saturated soil and weak rock slumps down the hill in a rotational matter. Okay, so this happens on a curved surface. So this is going to be curved here. The way rainwater is going to get through, and it's going to get to the clay or whatever impermeable rock there's going to be. And it's going to mean that this bit, the top bit, is going to slump, uh, slump down, slump down the air. Uh, the rock face and it's going to do it while turning so this is going to turn as it goes down so that's what slumping is sliding similar to slumping but occurs along a flat surface okay so once again you've got the rainfall just gone through the imper uh, gone through the permeable rock and it's reached the clay or whatever impermeable surface there is okay and it's moving it's caused the top layer of soil and um, permeable rock just slide down the rock face okay so lots of soil and rock can, uh, can move down the slope rapidly in this one so it happens very fast and it can cause a lot of damage especially in um, if there's a town or it's a settlement at the bottom it means that the rock can come down cause a lot of damage to uh, the settlement rock fall so this happens really suddenly and it's when a piece of rock from a weather's ro uh, face falls and this occurs because uh, the rock at the base of, um, of the face has been undercut leaving the rock unsupported uh, so the mass of the rock becomes too, mu uh, too much uh, to be unsupported and it causes the rock to collapse and fall so this is basically just gravity working on the rock and pulling it down soil creep soil moves down the slope very slowly and on a very gentle gradient Okay, and so when the soil is wet, soil increases in size and weight, and as the soil, uh, as the soil dries out, it contracts, resulting in a gradual downslope movement. So the soil gets bigger, and then it gets smaller, and as this happens, it uh, expands and contracts, and it just very slowly, very gently moves down the slope, as you can see here, along this bit, the soil has moved down. And over time, if you've got poles in the uh, soil, it's going to cause them to tilt. As you can see here, this at one point would have been straight up, but now it's bending downwards because of soil creep.